What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Lee and Margo are now post-tropical cyclones. There's no more advisories going to be issued on them. We have Tropical Storm Nigel that is forming and gradually, uh, less gradually and more quickly organizing as we speak. Yesterday, it looks like a pretty disorganized mess. We can go ahead and show you that and go ahead and go back 150 frames on this. So this is where it was before. The center of circulation wasn't exactly at the best, but it's been organizing over the last day or so, and now it has one of the best structures of a tropical storm that I have seen, and Lee also had a pretty impressive structure. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on. And we have the area of interest out here in the Atlantic Ocean near the main development region in the Cape Verde area. And we also have the gyre that is potentially going to start organizing and developing pretty soon, as well as a potential Bahamas threat that we'll have to keep an eye on. So we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on. Here is the latest for Lee. We're going to briefly go all the, over all of these. 45 mile per hour winds, pressure of 989, moving northeast to 22 miles per hour. This is the last advisory that is going to be issued on post tropical cyclone Lee. It made landfall yesterday and had a pretty high tide and caused quite a bit of damage at, from what I've heard. At least one person, from what I understand, has been killed, mainly due to rip currents. So we'll have to keep an eye on that death toll. And this is pretty much the end of a rather historic. Uh, situation right here with Lee. It went from an 80 mile per hour hurricane to a 165 mile per hour hurricane in 24 hours. And it, this was the fastest uh, uh, rapid intensification cycle we have seen since Hurricane Matthew in, two, in 2016. It actually matched that whole situation. Now we have Margo over here, post tropical cyclone. Margo, 40 mile per hour winds, pressure of 1001, moving north, uh, west northwest to 8 miles per hour. It's this is the last advisory on Margo. Hasn't really done that much other than ship than shipping interests and maybe some impacts on the Azores. So that's all that we'll an extent we'll talk about. Now we'll go ahead and get to Nigel because things have been getting pretty interesting over the last day or so. We're up to a 60 mile per hour tropical storm. Uh, maximum sustained winds once again 60. Pressures 997 uh, millibars, moving north northwest at 13 miles per hour, and tropical storm force winds extend out 140 miles from the center. Here's the discussion for uh, for uh, for Nigel right here. It is forecast to become a major hurricane in the next 60 hours, briefly before starting to gradually weaken and dec uh, decline in strength as it continues to move into cooler and cooler waters. But here's what the discussion also says. Nigel is an environment that should support strengthening. In fact, the S the, the ship's RII and DTOPS uh, rapid intensification models indicate that there's a near 50-50 chance of it strengthening 25 knots in the next 24 hours or 55 knots in the next 48 hours. The recent SIMS imagery uh, uh, at 9-11 UTC indicates that the inner, inner core is probably not yet well built or, or to support immediate rapid intensification, but it could happen at some point later today. Most of the intensity models indicate Nigel's intensity will peak at about 60 hours before increasing wind shear and cooler waters begin to affect it. Extra tropical transition should begin in about four days, and that process will likely be near complete by the end of the forecast period. O only small adjustments have been made, so no really ch any major changes in the track as well. So it's mainly it's mainly going to be keeping out to sea, thankfully. Uh, east of Bermuda, and then drifting out, potentially being an impact uh, uh, to the United Kingdom as an extra tropical cyclone. So that's what we have going on with Tropical Storm Nigel that is quickly organizing and quickly intensifying. We'll go ahead and show you the archive to what was going on. We were at 40 miles per hour late last night at 11 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time. Tropical storm force winds extended out 90 miles from the center, and the pressure was 1,005 millibars. At 5 a.m., we went up to 50 miles per, uh, per hour, pressure of 1,001 millibars. Tropical storm force winds extended out considerably up to 140 miles from the center. And now we're up to 60 miles per hour, and this thing continues to strengthen as we speak. And based off of satellite, it's only continuing to organize more and more, could potentially be be a ra another storm that rapidly intensifies similar to that of Lee. We'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to progress for shipping interests that are out there. Now we'll have to pay attention to our main event that is coming pretty soon. We have a 40% chance of formation in the next seven days in the eastern Atlantic. Here's what they have. 
A tropical wave is forecast to move off the west coast of Africa by Wednesday. Gradual development of this wave could be possible thereafter, and a tropical depression could form late this week or next weekend while the system moves westward across the eastern tropical Atlantic. 40% chance of formation in the next seven days. This thing is, is still over the coast of Africa, and they tagged this as an area of interest on Friday, I believe. So this was tagged out six days in advance. So to kind of get you where I'm thinking about this, they are quite confident that something is going to develop because they normally do not tag areas of interest until like maybe one to two days before they come off the coast of Africa. They tagged this almost a week in advance, just to give you some perspective. So that's what's really concerning me. And also, I've also been talking to my tropical team on Storms United, and they've and they've been talking to me, and they've been saying that the faster that Nigel organizes, the faster Nigel intensifies, the faster it'll get pushed up further to the north, and the faster it gets out of there, the faster the Bermuda High could easily rebuild and continue to shift this thing further and further to the west, potentially putting the Lesser Antilles and maybe even further in play for some potential impacts. We'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to progress. We'll just keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. We'll show you some model runs to kind of give you a better understanding of what's going on. Here's the European model. Having Lee start to intensify at a pretty decent pace, gets down to a mid-range Category 1 hurricane, according to the European, before starting to weaken and move out to sea, becoming an extra tropical cyclone. This area of interest starts de organizing and developing. Gets down to a, a tropical storm pretty quickly, actually, before strengthening up into a hurricane. Strengthens into a pretty powerful hurricane for that Category 3 hurricane pressure of 953 millibars. There's a high-pressure system building up right here. The European is potentially having this dr uh, drift out to sea. However, keep in mind, by the time that happens, we're about, like, what, six to seven days out, so we'll have to keep that in mind as time continues to go on. Next model we're going to go ahead and show you is the GFS right here. Here's the GFS pulled up right here. Has Lee intensifying to a Category 2 or Category 3 storm, and then this this thing starts to organize and develop and actually moves due west. And the weaker the storm is, in my opinion, as it starts out, the more this high pressure system is going to act, uh, uh, not really act upon it, but the more further west it's going to go. And that's what the GFS is kind of doing. It has it developing maybe into a tropical depression, tropical storm down the road, but we'll have to keep an eye on it. And then it also has this dark horse Bahama system potentially starting to organize and develop in the next five days or so. So we'll have to keep an eye out for an area of interest in the next two to three days. And then this thing makes landfall in South Carolina as a tropical storm, according to what the GFS is saying. We'll have have to keep an eye out on that as time continues to progress. I'm not exactly ruling that out, but this is also like five to six days out on the GFS. So again, it could happen. The conditions are definitely there for some sort of development over there, but they're not exactly ideal for really sustained organization at this time. So that's what we have going on with the GFS. And we also have the gyre that's Maybe or maybe not going to be developing in the uh, in the Gulf, not in the Gulf, but in the Caribbean Sea. We'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on. Next one we're showing you is the CMC. CMC has Nigel going up to a, a Category One hurricane. However, considering how fast it's intensifying, I think it could definitely get a lot stronger than that. Then it has this area of interest moving off the coast of Africa. CMC, I'm not sure what they're doing with this, but the CMC is having this push towards Europe. So I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not entirely, I don't entirely trust the CMC's track on this, primarily because the, the setup's just not there for it to push to the, uh, to the, uh, towards Europe, like, um, what was it? Lorenzo that did it. So that's the CMC. Next one we're going to go ahead and show you is the Navgem. Navgem, similar situation, intensifying Nigel moves east to Bermuda, then this thing comes off, and interestingly enough, it, the Navgem's doing similar to what the CMC is doing, I'll be honest with you, I don't see that scenario happening, just the steering currents aren't exactly built for that. So we'll have to keep an eye on, uh, even so we'll keep an eye on that. Next one we're showing you is the Icon model. Icon's pretty interesting as well, having Lee intensify to a Cat 1 storm. Then the Icon's having this thing move pretty much due west, maybe west-northwest. But as this high pressure system starts to build up, it's going to be mainly do moving due west for the foreseeable future. So that's what we have going on. 
with the tropics right now we're going to go ahead and show you the conditions that all these systems are really working with here's the global sea temperatures where Nigel is right now, it's in an area of 28 plus degrees Celsius water or 82 plus degree Fahrenheit water for those of you who live in the United States and do not use the metric system. So it's in plenty of warm water where this system is going to be moving out. It's in, going to be moving through record sea surface temperatures in the eastern Atlantic through the main development region. And if it continues to move south enough, it could move through a huge area of 30 plus degrees Celsius or 86 plus degree Fahrenheit waters as it's approaching the Caribbean and the Lesser Antilles. So all I'm going to say is, is, is if the high builds up just right and the system moves pretty much due west at that point, well, the Lesser Antilles are going to be in a bit of trouble for two reasons. One, there is plenty, plenty, plenty of warm water from here all the way to the Antilles. Two, there is not very much wind shear in the Western Atlantic Ocean as of right now. We'll keep you updated on that as time continues to go on. And in the Caribbean, there is a bit of shear starting to build up once again. However, that's mainly going to be more of a temporary phase from what I've seen with some models, so we'll keep an eye out for that, but also another reason is the ocean heat content. If this system moves out right here, it's not going to initially be moving through good ocean heat content, maybe around 25 to 50 max, but as we get into the western half of the main development region, things really start to explode very quickly. We first get to 50, then 75, then quickly gets up, jumps up to 100 plus OHC, then 125 as it's approaching the, Caribbe uh, the Caribbean. If it moves south enough, it could move through insanely warm waters and insane ocean heat content. But keep in mind, we're not 100% sure if that's going to happen at this time. All I can tell you is the conditions are still very good for organization and very good for development, despite this being an El Nino year. We all thought the El Nino year was going to be our saving grace this year, or we wouldn't have a very active season. However, sea surface temperature anomalies are what really brought this whole thing going on. For context, the El Nino's sea surface temperature anomalies near Chile, Peru, those areas right there, are about plus 2 to 3 degrees Celsius. The sea surface temperatures in the a lot of areas in the Atlantic, the anomalies, are plus 5 degrees Celsius, which are some of the strongest anomalies I have ever seen across the Atlantic, across the uh, anything uh, anywhere in the ocean uh, in the ocean at that point. And that's what's really crushing this El Nino, and that's why we're getting so many named storms from this. And that's why we're going to continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We're closing it out right here. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.